Hey everybody, welcome back to Why Not RV. If this is your first time watching, I'm Chris. And on today's episode, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys uh, something that some people refer to as truck charging, but it's actually DC to DC charging. I mean, I'm taking the DC system of the truck and charging the DC system of the trailer safely, efficiently, and with a lot of juice. Let's get to it. Remember, if you want to learn more and make less mistakes while RVing, be sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like and a comment down below. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Now, if you don't know already, uh, DC to DC charging is how you safely charge your coach's batteries because your vehicle's alternator, what it puts out voltage wise is not what your trailer's batteries are gonna be meant for. Now, regular flooded batteries probably gonna be perfectly fine, um, but you're not really charging them properly. Now, especially when you get into the lithium game, you really aren't doing anything for them whatsoever. Uh, so the only way to properly charge your batteries is with a DC to DC charger. And again, that takes a DC system of the truck and now it's charging the DC system of the coach. Let's just get right to the project itself. First things first, we need to be running some cabling both inside the truck and the trailer because you're pushing a lot of amperage through here. Depending on your amperage and how much, what size DC to DC charger you're putting in will depend on how thick of a cable you need to do or you need to put in because cabling is expensive. I'm gonna go and pop this chart up on here for a few seconds. Hopefully this can give you, screenshot this, save it. It's, a, it's an amazing chart to help you figure out what wire size you need, but uh, we can see that basically with with the you know 20 foot of the truck and maybe another you know six feet into the trailer, I'm calling it about 25 feet approximately, maybe 30 foot at most of of distance that this charging needs to go. The DC to DC charger I'm installing is a 60 amp Renogy DC to DC charger. So at 60 amps at 25 feet, we can see that I need to do a four gauge setup. So I got four gauge wire. Again, link in the description below to where you can get all the stuff off of Amazon. But, uh, you know, and again, depending on what size charger you need or what you plan on doing in the future will, will, will ultimately depend on what size cabling you need to do. All right, enough talking. Let's go ahead and just get right to the install. Um, you can see I have a wire just hanging out of my truck right now. I also have some wire on the ground here. Uh, this is all gonna get run from the engine bay all the way to the back to where I'm gonna mount an Anderson plug for where the trailer is gonna connect into the truck. Every vehicle is different, so I'm not gonna show you how I'm routing my cabling. Just make sure that when you are routing it, especially coming through the engine bay to the bottom side of your vehicle, that you are staying away from hot components like the exhaust. Um, obviously, you don't want the stuff resting directly right on the engine, anything like that. Um, so, you know, try and tuck it to the walls, keep it away from anything that produces heat as best as possible. Your connections inside your engine bay should be either directly to the alternator, both positive and negative, or at least a positive directly on your alternator. And your negative can be off your negative terminal of your battery, it could be off the negative of your alternator, negative ground somewhere on the engine, any one of those things. And one other thing I forgot to mention, whenever you're routing this, these wires, okay, both positive and negative from the engine bay to the back of the truck, um, of course, I already said to keep it away from anything hot, but also probably goes without saying, but I still need to say it, anything that moves, right? Um, you know, fans, anything that's rotating or moving, just keep it away from that stuff. Zip tie it along the way. I zip tie it about, you know, every foot to two feet, depending on, you know, what it was run against. Um, and uh, this is what I got in the interview. Let me show you. So off the negative terminal, I just have it direct on there. I have it down, comes around and goes to the back. And then directly off of the alternator, I have a 300 amp fuse that has both my car generator a one knot cable as well as the blue cable here you can see is the one that feeds right to up here which is the i now have an 80 amp fuse in here okay again because i'm doing a 60 amp dc to dc charger i went with an 80 amp fuse uh, for over protection so that goes in bam comes out it goes under and right to the back all the way to the back of the truck all right so you can see here on the back of the truck i have the connector right here on the back side of the uh, hitch mount and everything like that uh, I did that for a couple reasons. Number one, I wanted to be able to easily access it when I'm hitching and unhitching. So I got the hitch itself. I got the seven pin back here. I have it, the safety chains. Everything's just like right here for ease of hitching. Of course, you guys figure out where you want it for your vehicle. There's a thousand different places. When I had it as uh, uh, the same type of thing for my fifth wheel, it was in the bed of my truck. So you just gotta figure out where it makes sense for you. So if you want 
uh, full details on like how to make these connections for the Anderson connectors, crimp connecting, um, stuff like that, go to one of my earlier videos. I'm going to go ahead and post a link of it uh, up here um, so you can see how I make those connections and everything like that. Um, this is more of a generalization video. So now that I have the four gauge wire ran all throughout my truck up to the Anderson connector in the back, it's zip tied all up, nice and clean and tidy and uh, fused inside the truck. Next is to do basically the same exact thing on the trailer. I'm going to have to run basically from the front. I'm gonna leave a couple feet of extra so that uh, as I'm going down the road, it, you know, turning and whatnot, uh, that cable can can move with it and everything like that. But a couple feet extra up front and then up and inside the trailer. But let's get to work. I'll show you how to get it done. All right, let me just kind of show you. I kind of mocked myself up here to be real close with the trailer um, to know exactly what I want to do with my cabling. So what I've decided to do is uh, basically have my seven pin and this stay together. So what I'm gonna do is I got some uh, conduit here and that's going to basically go to right about here. I'm going to zip tie this. I have more conduit that will go on the rest of it uh, all the way up um, so that all basically stays in and then I'm going to zip tie this together uh, inside that conduit and everything like that so it's nice and protected but that way it's also kind of kept up with the seven pin and then from here like I said the seven pin goes that way this goes down here they're separate but on the same length and everything like that. Let me show you kind of what I did on the inside here. All right, so as I'm working on the DC to DC battery charger wiring, I just kind of want to show you and kind of tell you what I'm doing, all right? I already got my negative hooked up, went ahead and made a connection and got that set up. I have my ignition wire, which is what's going to signal this to turn on. And I'm going to wire that over here to where my seven pin comes in from the trailer um, because I'm going to wire it up to the headlights. Uh, I'm going to figure out which, which wire this is for the headlights. And that headlight basically is going to turn on when I run the lights, boom, now this is running. Okay, or, or marker lights, whatever you wanna call them. But now that's when that's gonna turn on. It's basically to turn on my lights, my DC to DC battery charger will be run. Okay, so here where the seven pin comes in, I have all these colors. Now, according to the Google, this green wire should be our marker lights. Now, I, like all things, don't trust it. I'm going to check it first, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, right now nothing's on, but I'm gonna go turn my truck on so the power is going through the system and leave the marker lights off. They should have no voltage. Then I'm gonna go ahead and turn the marker lights on and nothing else, and that should have 12 volts. So let's test it out. Okay, you can see my voltage here coming off of the green and ground. And again, my marker lights are on. Let's see if I can get a shot. You see the marker light on my truck is on, and that's the only thing that has power right now. So that is where I'm going to go ahead and wire my ignition. I'm gonna run this through and hook it up to that, and that will give that power to turn on. So at the very uh, front of my Airstream is where there is a lot of electrical components because the original system has a battery on the outside. Your main DC system is all right here. So all I did was I took that those cables, ran them up, I drilled a hole through the floor, ran them through, and then I lapped a whole bunch of silicone both on the inside and on the outside to make sure that, that was weather tight. That goes right into my negative and positive of my Renogy DC to DC 60 amp charger. And then out the other side, negative positive. I got the main negative going over to a bus bar that is all the negative of the DC system. The positive goes through a fuse. And then I have it directly to this cable because this cable is what runs directly to the batteries. As you see, it goes down and it goes, goes in inside this system here, which then goes back through and all the way back to the batteries. So that is the most direct route to the batteries that I could have without mounting this thing all the way back in there. So uh, putting this up here again, fused line, mounted up against the wall, everything's nice and tight, secured that connection with uh, some silicone, both inside and outside. We're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and get this all put back together. All right, so we're getting ready to go ahead and test out the DC to DC system. You can see that right now, the DC power uh, on, gotta get that to go away, uh, is showing a positive of 155 watts. Um, I'm kind of looking at the screen here. Total coming out of the batteries right now is 94. Just wanted to kind of see this beforehand. I'm gonna go ahead and start the truck, turn the marker lights on, that's gonna turn on the charger and we should see this change. All right, so the truck is on and running. As you can see, the marker lights are on. So let's go inside and check it out. Bam, now you can see that it shows the DC is charging the system. That's why it's showing a negative amount here, 360 watts. Um, so it is now pushing amperage into the uh, DC system. Now, right now it's only pushing about 30 amps. Um, 
the there's pins on that thing that you can adjust for different voltages and everything like that and because the batteries are already at a certain amount of volts i imagine that's why it's not pushing the full 60 amps um right right now again i just started but now you see it's working we're good to go that's about it that's it for this week's video um you know this is just a, a real generalization of a dc to dc charger and what i'm doing here with the airstream but that 60 amp in there um if you have any questions again make sure to drop in the comments below um look in the description i got a couple links in there to where you can get this uh charger where you can get these cables the anderson connector stuff like that um uh, make sure to hit that like hit the subscribe click the notification bell we'll see you next time thanks for watching why not rv bye